Hey friends, so now we're gonna talk about fundamental and very important concept in Python. We have the variables. So what is a variable? A variable is a name that you create to store value inside it in order to reuse it later in your program. So think about variables like a box and you give for this box a label like a name for it. It could be anything like a username, a country, an X and we can put stuff inside this box. Anything you want like a number, a string, maybe a logic or calculations. So now once you have stuff inside this box you can move this box everywhere in your code and you can use this stuff wherever you want inside your code and of course anytime you want you can go and open the box take everything out from it and put the new stuff inside it and then again you go and close the box and start using it around in your code so this is what we mean with variables All right, so now as usual, I'm gonna show you a sketch in order to understand how Python executes variables behind the scenes. Okay, so now again, we have our code and the output and we would like to go and create a variable. So we say the variable name is X and we want to store the number one inside it. And we call this assignment. That means we are assigning the value one to the variable name X. So now once we execute it, what's gonna happen? Python gonna go and create, let's say a box and call it variables. This box gonna be storing like values and data in the memory that is ready to be used whenever we want. So Python gonna create in the memory variable called x and will assign for this variable the value one inside it. So, so far what we have done, we have created the variable, we have assigned for it a value and now what is left is to use this variable. So let's say for example, we use the function print, but now inside the parenthesis, we will not use any value, we will use the variable name. So now if you go and execute it, Python cannot go and immediately print the value in the output. First, Python has to go and get the value of the variable. So it's gonna go and search in the memory for a variable called x. And once it finds it, it's gonna go and return and reads its value in order to use it in the print. So now during the execution, instead of having x, we're gonna have one. Now we have everything ready for the print. Python gonna go and print this message in the output. So you will see in the output one. So this is exactly how we work with the variables. We create one, we assign for it a value and then reuse it later. And now let's say that in the next steps in my code, we have to update the value of this variable. So we want to say, forget about the one, go and store two instead. So it's very simple. In order to update the value, we're gonna use the same syntax. So we're gonna say x is equal to two. So now once you execute it, Python gonna go to the variables and see, aha, I have already an x. So Python doesn't have to create a new one. All what can happen is that it's gonna go and update its value. Instead of one, we're gonna have two. So that means from this point, x now is equal to two inside the memory. And now, for example, if you go and print the x again, the same thing gonna happen. Python gonna go and search for the x. At this time it's gonna find two inside it and returns it to your code and Python gonna print two instead of one. Okay, so now let's keep going. Now I would like to create a new variable called y. And now as usual, we would like to assign for it a value. But this time we will not assign a direct value to it. We're gonna assign for it like a calculation. So we're gonna say the value of y gonna be the result of x plus three. So now if you go and execute it, Python cannot go and immediately and create the variable y. First, it has to do the calculation. And now in order to do the calculation, we need to find the value of x. So again, Python gonna go and access the variables in order to find the variable x, and then it's gonna read its value back to your code. So now we're gonna get the two inside our code, and now Python can do the calculation. So two plus three, the result gonna be five, and now it has everything in order to create the variable. And Python gonna go and create a new variable called y, and assign for it the value five. And now if you check the variables box in our memory, we have two variables and each of them holding a value and you can use them anytime you want in your program in order to do calculations, comparisons, to display them, anything you want. So for example, I can go and print the y. So Python gonna search for the variable y and return its value and then print it in the output. So this is exactly how we work with the variables inside our code. And this is as well exactly how Python executes the variables behind the scenes. Okay, so now back to our code and I'm gonna show you exactly why do we need variables. So now let's go and print free stuff. Like for example, print and I'm gonna say my name is Bara. And of course you can go and use your name. You don't have to use mine. Let's go to the second print and we're gonna say Bara is learning Python. Now we're gonna go to the third one and we say print Bara wants to become Python expert. 
So that's all. Let's go and execute it. And we can see our messages exactly like in the print. So my friend, this is working, but we still have an issue. Now let's say that I would like to go and change the name from Bara to Maria, for example. Now to do that, you have to go everywhere and start manually changing the name from Bara to Maria, right? And this is of course not really smart. Imagine you have like a big complex code. You have to go everywhere and start changing the values. So for sure, this is gonna go out of control. So now if I go and execute this, I will get Maria instead of Bara. Now we don't want this, we want to make it smarter, right? So let's get everything back like before. And this time we're gonna use the power of the variables. So let's go and create a new variable. Let's call it a name. So this is the variable name. And now we want to go and store inside it a value. So in order to do that, we're gonna use equal and after that we're gonna have double quotes and we're gonna use the name so again this is the variable name and this is the value that will be stored inside the name so we are assigning a value so with that we have created a variable and we assigned for it a value the next step we want to go and use this variable right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and copy the whole thing and put it below the variable so now what we're gonna do we're gonna go and replace all those static values of the first name bara and we're gonna replace them with the variable name so we're gonna have a name here as well here and here but now if you go and execute it, what's gonna happen, you will see in the output, my name is name. And that's because the variable name is inside the double quotes and Python gonna think this is just a text. Now, how are we gonna tell Python this is a variable? This is not a part of the message. So that means in one print, I want to have like static part and another part that is dynamic using the variables. So now in order to do that, we use the comma. And then after that, we use the variable name. So we're gonna go and get rid of this static part. And now you can see the name is outside of the static part so it's not inside double quotes and python can understand okay this is a variable so now if you go and execute it you will see over here my name is bara and this value came from the variable now one more thing that you might notice is that there is a space between the static part and the variable and this space here it comes from the comma so each time you use a comma python gonna go and automatically add a space between the parts so now let's go and fix the second message by looking to this what is the dynamic part and what is the static part is learning python is the static part and the name is variable so in order to fix it, we're going to go and remove the name from here. And this time we're going to put the variable at the start and then split it from the static part using a comma. So variable is learning Python. If you go and execute it, you will see here para is learning Python. And with that, we made the first part of the message dynamic. And the same thing for the third message wants to become Python expert is the static part. And the first part is the dynamic using, of course, the variable. So now if you go and execute it, you will see in the output everything is now working correctly. So now I'm going to show you exactly why do we need variables. At the start in the first section, you saw me changing the values manually. So I go in each print and start modifying the values. And this is really annoying, right? But now after using variables, all what I have to do is to go and change the value only once, only add a variable. So now let's say instead of having Bara, we're going to go and use Maria. And if I go and execute the code, you will see everything change as well in my code. So my name is Maria. Maria is learning python maria wants to become python expert so you can see now maria everywhere and this is exactly why do we need variables we go and create it in one place and then we reuse it multiple times inside our code and if i want to change something i change only the variable and this is gonna affect the whole code and now i would like to show you something quickly if i go and say name is equal and let's say i'm gonna go and put my name here so that means i'm assigning a new value to the variable name and if i go and execute it you will see nothing gonna happen and that's because because Python execute the code line by line. So at the line five, name is equal to Maria. At the line six, the variable name contains the value Maria. And Python has no idea that later I have updated the value. And the same thing for the line seven and eight. Python only knows that the name is equal to Maria. And only at the line 10, Python gonna go and update the value in the variable. So now if I go and take everything from here and put it after the update, and I go and execute it, you will see in the third section, the name is equal 
equal to para because at the line 11 now if python goes to the variable name it will find the value para and not maria because we have updated so this is how python works step by step line by line now let's go and introduce a new variable to our code so if you check again our messages we can find another repetition and that is the python so we have it twice here if you have the feeling that you are repeating the same value over and over you can go and create for it a variable so we can go and create a new variable called language and we can go and assign for it the value python we have to use this variable inside our code so how are we gonna do it in the first print we don't have python so there is no need to use it but in the second print we have here python now instead of having it static like this we're gonna use our new variable so i'm gonna go and remove it and now after that we're gonna go and use language but of course we cannot do it like this we have to split using a comma so now by looking to our print we have a variable comma then a static value is learning and then comma and then again a variable so if you go and execute it everything gonna be working maria is learning python so perfect let's go and update the last print so now python is in between like two static values so we're gonna go and replace this with a variable language but we cannot leave it inside two double quotes we're gonna split things so after become we're gonna have the double quotes and then a comma and after the language we have another comma because the expert here is a static value but what is missing here is a double comma in order to have the right syntax so this time we have four parts we have variable a static part again a variable and then a static part let's go and execute it so now as you can see everything is working so now our code is fully dynamic and we can change stuff very easily so now let's go and change the values instead of maria i'm gonna go and use my name and this time i'm not learning python i'm gonna go and learn javascript so now if i go and execute it you can see my name is bara bara is learning javascript and bara wants to become a javascript expert all right my friends now we can have the feeling that our code is smarter right our code is completely dynamic and we have a full control on the values and this is exactly the power that the variable gives us it makes everything more dynamic and smart inside our code Alright my friends, let's have a quick recap about the variables. Variables is the foundations in order to make your code dynamic. We use it in order to create a name and we store inside it a value. And we use the equal operator in order to assign values to the variables. And Python keeps those values inside the memory in order to have a quick access. And once you create a variable, you can go and reuse it wherever you want inside your code. And of course, during the execution, you can go and update the value of the variable. So my friends, you can find variables in every real world applications from a very simple script to advanced one. So variables are amazing. Alright, now I have the following challenge for you. You have to go and print those three lines, but not only that, take a look to the text to introduce at least one variable in your code to make things dynamic. So now pause the video and write your solution. Okay friends, so by looking back to our plan, with that we have learned how to make a dynamic and smart code using the fundamental concept, the variables. And now next we're gonna learn the second very important built-in function in Python, the input, in order to get a value from our users. All right, my friends, one more last thing. If you really enjoyed this type of tutorials where it's free and as well I sketch those complex concepts and you want more content like this, then support the channel by subscribing, liking, commenting. This can really help with the algorithm and it's gonna support the channel by reaching others like you and as well it can help me to make more content like this and of course thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video